Hey everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. Hope everybody's having uh, a great uh, week to this point, midway uh, through the work week. As for me, it's been sort of uh, a cool little switch up. You know, I've been working primarily from the offsite office uh, away from the home. I had to get out of the home office because there were too many distractions. My grandson was raiding uh, my space while I was working with my clients. Not very professional. Uh, and I didn't want to hamstring him and from his freedoms of moving about. So it was time for me to go back to the office. And I've been there pretty much doing everything there. Sometimes I go into my home office and do something, but uh, primarily I've been working at the office well. Uh, pretty sure everybody's aware of the fact that we just have a tropical storm move through Houston, directly through the center of Houston, as a matter of fact. Uh, and we were expecting a lot of flooding. Didn't get a lot of flooding. Got uh, some pretty hefty wind gusts for a while, some rain, uh, but no widespread major flooding, uh, which we are known for with all these bayous and everything. But nevertheless, we... Uh, prepared for it so I actually on Monday at about noon packed up my stuff at the office and came home and set up and you know I actually worked from home a good thing that I did the office did lose power uh, for most of the day yesterday uh, and everything got back up power and water for most of the day yesterday but it got back up so I'll probably be going in uh, also before I share with you uh, this little short important message uh, I want to remind you that we're still doing uh, the Black Wealth Series. Uh, we're still accepting sponsorships uh, for space in my 25th book, which is Chasing the Ghost, the Quest for Black Wealth. And you can literally sponsor space in the book and pay tribute to anyone that you want to pay tribute to. That's the short version. The information is in the description box. I would love to have you be a permanent part of this project. It's something I'm extremely proud of. Uh, 25 books, no matter how you measure it up and stack it up, is a worthy accomplishment, something worthy of uh, me being proud, and I am. Now, we, we love to deride the black man. We love to talk about uh, the failures of the black man, and I am extremely... Uh, and intensely engaged in calling black men to the mat and challenging black men to live up uh, to our, the level of our design. I am, uh, in many cases, told that I focus way too much on challenging black men and not enough on uh, the errors of black women. Well, first of all, I'm a black man. That has to be uh, my point of focus is to call men who can relate to me and I who to, to whom I can relate uh, to raise the level of our performance. It does not in any way mitigate the culpability of black women in our current situation. It does not relieve black women of their own accountability and responsibility. It simply says as a man, I must see my role and I must be willing to challenge men. But in all of that doing, what I don't see is an acknowledgement of the fact that black men truly have no space, no safe space in which they can be human. Black man is expected to be the man who pays all the bills, covers all the costs, all this stuff that we love to debate on social media, has an unbelievable understanding, the most romantic person in the history of manhood, uh, all these things that are demands upon us and never acknowledge the challenges that we face simply by being a black man. And the fact that there is this stigma on mental health in the black community that uh, I believe no one suffers from more than black men. Don't get me wrong, black women suffer, but black women will at least seek counseling in most instances. Black men won't. Black men need a safe space. Black men need a place where we can come together and connect, where we can sit up and implode this myth 
that a real man doesn't need help. That we can destroy the myth that a real man has it all together, that, the, that a real man uh, has no weaknesses, no vulnerability, that a real man never cries. All these things that we have been taught since early childhood that we have internalized has now come to the surface and has us operating at su such a highly wound state uh, uh, of existence, and that's mentally and emotionally, that it is beyond measure. And what we need is a place. And so what we've decided to do is to work intentionally over the next year to create those spaces. Uh, we're gonna do it as a part of the Black Men Lead, Rite of Passage Initiative. We've always had several phases to this Rite of Passage. We've always had uh, the Rite of Passage itself, which is from age four to age 13. But we've also had a, a part of the program that deals with uh, adolescent, uh, black adolescent males, uh, primarily in uh, setting off and mitigating violence and criminality and all the way up to the age of 30 as well as dealing with preparation uh, and developing them into functional and productive men in society who respect our women, protect our women, love our women and protect and love our children and our elderly as well. Uh, we're going to be rolling out a plan over the next, let's say six weeks of how we're going to want to connect with people in different cities that are willing to use their place of business. What we've been able to do in Houston, a couple of brothers who have jumped out ahead of this are using barbershops, which I think is a great place because the barbershop has always been a place where everything is on deck, nothing is off limits. You can talk, you can be honest, you can get out there. And I think that's a place, that's a space that men kind of feel safe in. Uh, but we need to open up about some of the more darker matters, the fun stuff, the political stuff, the sports stuff, all that stuff good. But we really need to talk about how we feel about where we are in our marriages, how we feel about where we are in our finances, how we feel about where we are in our careers, how we feel about what we are as parents. I think it's immensely important that we get to that point. And so we will be pushing that. Uh, if you want to learn more about what we're doing at this point in Black Man Lead, the link is going to be in the box. Uh, if you want to support what we're doing, you can do that as well. But what we need is people who are willing to say, hey, man, I, I've got a cigar shop. I've got uh, a restaurant. I've got, uh, you know, a, a barber shop, whatever. Uh, where men can come together on a certain, you know, on a certain day. What's cool about the barbershop is most barbershops still kind of function on the old school uh, closed on Mondays thing. So Monday is a good, great time to come through in the evenings. Uh, nobody's in there waiting on a haircut. Everybody can sit down and just chop it up. Uh, there are a couple of people, like I said, doing that in the Houston area. Um, and so what we want to do is we want to create these safe spaces. What I'm going to be offering and putting together is not just the community part of it, not just the camaraderie and brotherhood, but also uh, implementing and integrating real true mental health interventions, mental health uh, uh, environments and techniques uh, that will allow people to actually be in a situation where they can literally heal. And so I'm excited about it. It's not a small undertaking and there's so much already on deck, but we can't sit around and pretend that everything is good. Uh, I, I made this statement earlier and I'm gonna close on it. I'm good can no longer be a default statement when a brother is asked what, how, how he's doing or you know what's going on or whatever the question is. I'm good can't be a default setting. A brother needs a place where he can be honest. A brother needs to be able to say, man, I'm struggling right now in my marriage. I'm struggling right now in trying to hold things together financially for my family. I'm struggling right now in dealing with my sense of inadequacy and not being able to do certain things that I so desperately and passionately want to do. Black men need to be able to talk about these things without being, without fearing they're going to be made to feel small. We have so many 
Uh, and social media has made this such a dangerous space. Why? Because you have so many people bragging about how well they're doing. You have so many people talking about how successful they are. You got so many people. And, and a lot of times people have a tendency to, to measure themselves and compare themselves to others. And it's quick to develop inferiority complexes, senses of inadequacy, and so much more. So this is what we're gonna work on. I'm calling anyone who wants to be a part of this to reach out to me. Um, send me an email. That The email address will definitely be in the uh, description box of this video. I'm about to get off here, I'm about to pick up one of the youngins. Um, but I just had to touch on this while I'm moving around. Uh, been busy all day in, in, in the office at home. So uh, that's what I want to talk to you about. I hope that uh, I'm hitting home with someone or more or more than someone, some people, and that we can make moves on this because the quicker we heal as men, the more effective we'll be as leaders. And on that note, I'm going to check out. You guys have an unbelievable time.